Hello everybody! It's Music Monday to be exact on 5 at 5. Everybody, give it up for Mr. Duncan James! Hello! Hello, darling! How are you? I'm so great. Thank you for having me on your um, Music Monday. I feel very honored to be a part. Let's dive right into it. So you, you, are, you have a deep connection to musical theater. Yeah, I love musical theatre. We are artists, or well, you're a solo artist, I'm an artist from a band, but every time you get on that stage and you perform, it's a theatre in a way, even if you're singing your songs that everybody loves, you're on a stage and you're performing to an audience. It, it is a kind of a character you, you put on. I think we all have our working face and we all have the conversations we have with our colleagues. It is kind of a, a version of yourself that you put out there with Blue. Did you have like your character? I mean, obviously the pretty one. Oh, back in the day, like going back 20 years ago when, when me and the boys started our career in Blue, I was straight. I was always being depicted by the media as the ladies' man. I was linked to a whole bunch of celebrity women and all sorts of stuff. That's how they portrayed me, which was completely and utterly bollocks because that wasn't who I was or what was really going on. I was I was literally a closeted gay guy and I had a secret boyfriend oh, wow. and I was so frightened to let anybody know that. But yet the media had portrayed me as, as this character. I just kind of went with it because I thought, okay, well, that's what they're saying. But I wasn't happy. I was really unhappy inside and almost felt like I was living a complete lie. Did the boys know? No. Oh, really? Nobody knew at first because I was so frightened that if it came out from anybody, my secret was out there. So I thought the best thing to do is just keep it to myself. And there's only so long you can do that for, you know, there's only so much you can keep inside until you start going crazy. I mean, the press was all over you guys. I don't know how I managed to keep it a secret for so long. I was just very, very scared. And I think that when you get into this industry, a lot of people don't realize the immense pressure that you as an artist goes through, but the pressure you get from the media, because you're famous, they have this right to be able to dig up anything about you and print it. And if there's any skeletons in your closet, you're living in fear that something's going to be said or something's going to come out. And it's really frightening. And of course, I wouldn't change it for the world. I love doing what I do, but you have to have thick skin in this business. Sadly, you have to. You're able to do what you love the most, but you, you, gotta, you have to pay a price. Yes, and there's you always a price. The story of how Blue came together, it's not like a similar story to many other boy or girl bands. We just auditioned from a, an advert in a magazine in England called The Stage Magazine. You would circle out all the auditions. And I answered an audition, it just was looking for singers for a new exciting pop venture attached to a, a major record label. So of course I was like, oh my God, this sounds great. So I sent off back then my tape, because that's what we had tapes, a headshot and a little CV about me. When I got to the audition, I'd met one of the other boys, Anthony. Also, we met Lee. And yeah, the rest is history, really. We made the cut. And there was two other boys in the band with us initially. And on the day we were meant to sign our record deal, the record company got rid of the other two boys. They just kept me, Anthony and Lee. And then we went on an audition to find a fourth member. And that's when we got Simon. You guys are insanely talented. The harmonies you do and the dancing, and it's, it's just insane. And not only that you can sing, but all of your voices have such a specific tone. It's really overwhelming how, how talented and good you are. Every time when I heard Breathe Easy. Yes. Lee doing like this crazy high note. Crazy. Uh, he can get super high. The first time we all got into the studio together with a producer called Stargate, they were based in Trondheim in Norway. They just did something to our voices where we just, they stacked our voices on top of each other to create that blue sound. Lee has got that higher pitched tone. I've got more of a huskier tone. Simon, who's got a very rich, velvety, chocolatey tone. And Anthony, who's got more of a a gravelly tone, put them all together and they created this, this sound that people knew. Don't you think also when you listen to the songs, still, it's so fresh. It does not sound like it's been a while, I would say. It's nice because, you know, they still play our songs 20 years on on the radio. We, get, we still get the royalty checks. How was it, like doing it with Elton? Doing it with Elton was very fun. <laughs> Elton was such an amazing man, actually, to work with. What was so lovely about Sorry Seems to Be the Hardest Word was we recorded it and then there was like a charity event and Elton was at the charity event as well on another, another table. I was the nominated person to go over to speak to him and ask him if he would be involved. Wait, 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 wait. The other said, 
you, you go. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you ask yeah. Him. It's all like, he's on the table. Go and ask him. Go and ask him. He obviously knew about Blue and he knew about us. He was like, yeah, I'll, 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 I'll do it. I'll play the piano or something like that. And we just expected him just to be playing the piano. We didn't think he'd come in and sing. He had a rider of what he wanted for when he arrived. Flowers, room temperature, water. I remember he had a tracksuit on and um, he sat down and he goes, right then, let's go. And he literally started playing one take and then he just sang and he was like, there we go. You can use what you want. So then the producers, Stargate, you know, did their magic editing and, and, and the rest is history. He was so professional. He just came in and just, just sang it in once and off he went again. He was brilliant. I met him once briefly and he immediately kissed me on the mouth. And I thought, yes, you are my man. <laughs> I mean, especially uh, the Elton John AIDS Foundation, the amount of money that he raises, the balls every year. And he's been such uh, a person for, for supporting the AIDS Foundation and getting so much awareness out there. He's really involved in so many charities and so passionate about what he does and fundraising. He's an amazing man, really amazing man. From one icon to the next, it's one of the most brilliant roles you can get in musical theatre, Frank and Furder of the Rocky Horror Picture Show. That was for me, I think, a dream role. It is such a gift, that part. Sweet Transvestite is your opening number, which is just such a delicious song. I was thrilled to be playing this part because not only did I get to dress up, which I love, and have the makeup and the wig and wear the suspenders and the high heels, but I also got to deliver such wonderful lines that he has. It was just amazing. I loved every single second of it. It is well written. I mean, you have to like get into it. You do your research. I don't know how you work, but I constantly find my own version of any character I do. What was it that, that linked you to Frankenfurter? Well, first of all, I think you would make a fantastic Frankenfurter. I think it would be, you'd be great. Yeah, um, I would love to do it. When I got the part, I remember the very first day I met the director, he said to me, right, I don't want you to watch Tim Curry. I don't want you to watch anything on YouTube. I don't want you to watch anybody. He goes, I want us to start creating your Frank right here, right now. And we're going to figure out how your Frank's going to be because everybody has a different idea of how it is. And I don't want you to copy anybody, especially, you know, the film. I remember thinking to myself, okay, great. And then in my head, I thought, well, I'm, I'm quite a big, a big guy. I have to incorporate my body, how I move, how I make my Frank. And I kind of channeled in my head a strong, powerful lunatic who's got this complete twisted gay side to him that wants to also be a bit of a psychopath. So a gay, twisted, transsexual psychopath uh, who's butch. So I thought, okay, Damn. I'm just, just going to play it like that. And it worked. I had some amazing reviews and I was really pleased with how I played him. The audience reactions that you get, it's just wonderful. It is a whole different version of Frank. Fantastic, obviously, and you look delicious. We have to talk about Eurovision. Did you? This is our mutual <laughs> common ground. How much fun was Eurovision? I mean, it's bonkers, right? I didn't really know what to expect when we turned up to Dusseldorf in 2011. I was just like, wow, this is, this is the most craziest show I've ever done in my life, but I loved every second of it. It was brilliant. How did you find it? I've always been a huge Eurovision fan and I just loved watching it with my parents. You know, it was those rare moments where you can stay up late as a little boy. Yes. And it was just so over the top and flamboyant. And I really felt like, oh yes, this, these are my people. And I just love the whole theater about it. I love the press, I love the yeah. backstage thing. I love to mingle with all the contestants. And I loved to win. <laughs> <laughs> well, I can't say that. We didn't win. We came first twice, we say, because we came 11. We still hold our heads up high because we've had the highest place the UK has for a, for a long time. I remember your year when you won and it was, I, I cried for you because I was so happy for you watching your face when you had won. You could just see in your eyes, you know, just all the emotions that were running through you. You're one of the best winners for me. It was just a great song. You sung it so well and you stood there. It was just one of those moments that was just like, wow, wow. And you kept a place in all of our hearts and you still have. And that's why I'm, I was so excited to talk to you today because I'm a huge fan of you. I think everything that you've done in your career has been fantastic. The same back to you. I was very excited to talk to you today. Thank you so much. Thank you, guys. Bye, everybody.